Now the next thing that we're going to cover are ports. On the iPad you have your proprietary port on the bottom and then you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up here. That's all you have on the iPad. If you want you can get an adapter for the bottom and I believe it costs uh, either thirty or forty dollars. But actually let's go to the Apple site and check. Okay, the Apple Digital AV adapter that you can use to attach to an HDMI cord, and an HDMI out so you can mirror what's on here on a television set, costs forty dollars. On the Motorola Zoom, you have several ports on the bottom down here. You have your micro USB port and your micro HDMI port. Okay. Also you have where you plug the device in down here you have a port and up on top you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up here. So it has a couple of more options, a couple of more ports. You also have a micro SD card slot up top here which also will fit the SIM card in the same slot here. Actually it's not the same slot but it's the same area here where you put both cards in. You put your 4G SIM card in and you also can put a micro SD card in there as well. So as for ports, I mean the Motorola Zoom does not come with an HDMI cord but neither does the iPad. The only difference is, is that you don't have to buy an adapter for this to plug an HDMI cord into this to pump it out to your television set. Also you can put an SD card in here and expand the memory on it. So as far as ports and expandability goes, we're going to have to give it to the Motorola Zoom over here. Because out of the box, you get more options with the Zoom. Now the next thing I'm going to cover here is the speaker. Now on the back of the iPad, you have your speaker down here. It's sort of like pinholes in this section down here. On the back of the Motorola Zoom you have a speaker here and you have a speaker here. So with the Zoom you have stereo speakers. With the iPad you have a mono speaker. So the Motorola Zoom is a little more high-end. It has stereo speakers on it. The only thing is is that when you might have the device placed on its back these speakers can get covered up and they can get muffled. With the iPad, the speaker is on this sort of uh, beveled area here, this tapered edge. So even when it's down, some of the sound can be pushed out this way. So I'm going to have to call this one a wash because the placement on the iPad is a little bit better because when it's flushed down, you know, you're going to get a little bit better sound out of it but you get stereo speakers on the Motorola Zoom. So I'm gonna leave that one up to you which one you like better because again you're not always laying the device down so the iPad is not always in every situation gonna be better. But again you're not always holding the device so having stereo speakers isn't always gonna be better either. So when you hold this device you're gonna get better sound out of this and when you lay the iPad down, you're going to get better sound out of it than you would be laying that down. So that one, I'm going to have to call a wash. That one, I'm going to leave for you to decide what you like better. Now, the next category is usability. Everybody says the iPad just works. Both devices are incredibly easy to use. If you're a modern day computer user, you should know how to use either device. But I'm going to tell you something that you might not expect. I have never been an iPhone user. I have had, I've been with Android since the beginning. I had the G1, I had the Nexus One, and now I have the Motorola Atrix phone. So I know Android inside and out. Okay? I've never really used an iPhone other than maybe a handful of times. So people that have used an iPhone, it's second nature for them to be able to use an iPad and that's great because a lot of people have iPhones. But I think most of the people who tell you that the iPad just works 
are people who exclusively use iPhones. So that's why they can use the iPad very easily. I could tell you that Android just works. Everything's there, and there are a couple of scenarios here where things are more in your face here and more on the surface than they are on the iPad. So in this case, I want to debunk something here. You don't have to be a geek to use Android. It's not difficult. Any modern day computer user could use either one of these devices and figure it out within a short period of time. You don't have to be a brain surgeon. Neither of these devices compare to a Windows PC, a Linux PC, or an OS X PC. I mean, these are much more simplified versions, much more simplified operating systems. So don't let anybody fool you. It's just most people who say that have iPhones, so it's just a natural progression for them to move on to a device like this. Like I said, I have been, for eight years, I was a Mac user. For two and a half years, I've been an Android user. I know both ends of the spectrum. And I can tell you right now that neither device is easier to use than the other. It's just maybe what you're used to. I actually found the iPad, I found myself being a little bit lost using it because I have never used an iPhone before. I didn't know, like nowhere in the documentation tells you that you can multitask by hitting the home button twice. You just have to figure that out. Whereas on the Motorola Zoom, you just hit the multitasking button here and it just shoots up the seven last things that you did. If you hold it in landscape mode, it'll show you the last five things that you did. Okay, so in this case, your, your multitasking is more so on the surface with the Android device than it is with iOS. That's just an example. So there really is no, neither device is easier to use than the other. And I want to, I think that's very important to say because most people that tell you that iOS, it just works, well, they're, they've, they're iPhone users, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that if you've used something for years and you get the same thing in a tablet, you, there's no question about it, okay? So as far as usability, it's a wash. You have your apps here you have widgets here, you have your apps here, you have you know multitasking here. Like I said, I had to actually look that up to find that out. But it's just all right there. It's not, it's, you don't have to be a brain surgeon for it. And I think I've talked that to death, but I think it's very important that I had said that because only people who are not Android users are gonna say that Android is difficult to use because it's not difficult to use. So that's a wash. We're going to cover another thing which we just kind of touched on is the multitasking. You double click on the iPad and you get the last six things that you used. And you can jump to any of them. So you want to jump to Safari, we were just there. You want to jump to um, YouTube, we were there. Okay. Same thing over here. You want to jump to YouTube, there you go. You want to jump to the browser, there you go. Okay, very simple. I know there's difference in mechanics as how the the multitasking works. This is more of a pause. This is more of an actual multitask. But to the end user, it doesn't matter. You're, you're able to jump between the last couple of applications that you're using. So again, that's a wash. The multitasking is both functional on both machines here. So neither device has the edge on that. Now as far as multitasking goes, I'm going to show you, I'm going to play a song on both devices here and show you that you can surf and do whatever you want while you're playing it. We're just going to play a song here and then we're going to hit the multitasking button down here. We're going to go to Safari and there you go. You can look up stuff while you're listening to music and this is royalty free music I don't sit down and jam to this on a regular basis but gives you an idea of what's going on here likewise over here I could play a song
and surf the internet. So there you go. You get the same multitasking as far as music goes on both devices. Okay, one thing to note is that both devices allow you to change the background, the wallpaper. You can use any number of backgrounds available on the, on the device itself, or you can actually take a picture and use it as your background. The only edge here is that Android actually allows you to do live wallpapers. So the wallpapers in the back can move. That's just something worth noting because there's really no benefit to either one of them that's a personal preference thing if you like a device that you can actually have moving wallpapers on then your only option is an Android tablet but if you don't care then it's not a factor for you so you can go with either device but that's just something that's important for you to know so neither device gets a point for that Now, both devices have app stores and a lot of apps in those app stores. Apple actually has an edge in the number of apps in their store, but Android's app store is quite large. So it's not like you're comparing a store that has everything compared to a store that has only a few things. My recommendation to you, if you're deciding, if you're on the fence, what device that you want, my recommendation to you would be to explore the Apple App Store. You can do that through iTunes. And you can also explore the Android Market on the Android Market website. So you just pull up a web browser and you see what, what apps they have. A lot of the time you're going to find apps in both stores, the same app in both stores. The high-end apps are in both places. So I'm going to leave that to you. That's a personal preference thing because personally I only use a handful of apps. And you're going to find some apps are better on Android. You're going to find some apps are better on iOS. So that's a personal preference thing. That's something that you have to decide for yourself. Now, in line with that, because Google is behind Android, you're going to find that a lot of their apps are more fleshed out on the Android platform than they are on iOS, like their maps, their uh, voice control. A lot of different things are fleshed out much more on Android from Google than they are on iOS. So again, like I said, it's just a personal preference, what you feel is best.